Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. You can all can take your seat. We give honor to the presence of the Lord in this place. We thank and praise the Lord for another opportunity to stand before the people of God. And uh, I'm still happy and just grateful that the Lord has blessed us to be able to have our own church. You know, as you all know, we were on a world tour. Uh, we were in the hotels for a good little while throughout the pandemic. And uh, we're here at our home. And so we're just asking God to continue to move by his spirit so that we can take hold of this particular uh, property and uh, we can do more here in Jesus name. That's my prayer. That's been my prayer. And that's what I will continue to pray. I know the Lord will answer that thing because he answered the other ones. Amen. I give honor to my pastor, Suffolk Bishop Keith Maddox. Amen. We thank and praise the Lord for you. We love you. Give honor to our own very Dr. Dre. She's in the house today. Thank and praise the Lord for you. Amen. Give all honor to all of our deacons and all of the ministers and all of our co-laborers. Uh, to my other associate pastor who is over Christian education. I'm over outreach and evangelism. You forgot. That's okay. We're going to help you. Amen. And we give honor to all the men and women of God, to all saints and friends. My mother and father are here. I thank and praise the Lord for them. Amen. We thank them so much. And friends and uh, neighbors are here. Uh, my my uh, Dr. Cordette is here. She uh, was our SAT prep teacher. Uh, and she's here. I don't know if any of you all took SAT prep with Dr. Cordette here in Los Angeles. So we thank and praise the Lord for her as well. Amen. We're just going to go ahead and get into our content today and be able to share with you all. I got a bag, you all. Come on and grab my bag back there. You know I, you know I come prepared, right? Amen. Bring the bag. Bring the bag. Y'all remember this bag? This the laundry bag. This the bag you go to the beach with. Y'all remember this bag? How many of y'all had one of these bags? Be honest. How many of y'all still got one of these bags? <laughs> Amen. So we're going to get into it today. We're going to need a lot of volunteers. We're going to need a lot of volunteers. I'm going to try to make sure I make it in 45 minutes. Amen. Brother Julius, come on and get this. We're going to make sure that everybody has one, one of these. You're going to need this during the presentation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Brother Julius. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to talk about the women of God, the women of God. We're going to pass those out a little bit later. We're going to make sure everybody gets one. Uh, we're going to talk about the women of God today. Um, and the reason why we're, we're discussing that and we're sharing that is because uh, as women of God in the faith, uh, we should be aspiring to please God. That's what we should be aspiring to do. Just like Enoch did, we should be aspiring to please the Lord Jesus. So go on to the next slide. Amen. So we know that there are lots of women that have um, moved to great heights here in the United States. As black women, we have, uh, we're the largest voting, voting group. We use the Save America every time, every election. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, but we, we understand that while we can become mayors and we can become attorneys and judges and district attorneys and we can uh, aspire to be congresswomen and senators and vice presidents and win the Olympics, right? And uh, also uh, do great things and win the EGOT and the Emmy and the Grammy and the Oscar and all of those things. Nothing is greater than the word of God and the women of God in the word of God. Amen. I, I know that we look at these people and we're like, oh man, Issa Rae, she got two hundred and you know seventy million dollars from HBO, and Oprah has her magazine, and right. We look at all these people and we aspire to be like them. They have all these empowerment workshops, hallelujah, that you can go to, and you know you go down to the YouTube theater and you you watch Michelle Obama, and you want to be in the in that circle, hallelujah. But a lot of them, they don't know God. They they're just you know working out of their own humanistic ways. There, it's, it's all by their, their will and their willpower, right? But we want to depend on the word of God. We want to depend on the Holy Ghost. We want to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Because I'm not successful if I don't have the Lord Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so today we want to just go ahead and make the case for why you should be a woman of God who serves God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a woman of God who serves God. Hallelujah. Come on, men. I'm a man of God 
who serves God. Right? We're not just out here serving ourselves. We're not just out here being about ourselves. Right? It's, it's not just about community service. It's about serving the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go on to the next slide. So we're going to do a little case study today. We're going to do a little case study. We're going to find out what we need to do. But the first scripture that we want to look at is in Philippians 3 and 17 in the Amplified. It says, brothers and sisters, together follow my example and observe those who live by the pattern we gave you. There is a pattern of success. There is a pattern for success in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. There are, there are people that you can look at in the scriptures and you can say, I'm going to follow that pattern because I want to be successful. Hallelujah. We've never had a black first lady. Many people are now going to say, I'm going to follow the pattern of Michelle Obama. Hallelujah. I'm going to get all A's and then I'm going to apply to Princeton and then I'm going to get into Princeton. And then after Princeton, I'm going to apply to uh, Harvard and then work in, the, in a law firm. Right? That's a trajectory. That's a pattern path that you could follow right but there's also a trajectory and a path for success in the word of God for the women of God for the men of God that you can follow in the new testament hallelujah that you can say oh I want to be like that I want to be like them hallelujah thank you Jesus and so an example hallelujah as you can see right here it's 42 ways to say example and just a few of them are, for instance as seen in, as seen in, in particular, to show you what I mean, like, as in, in other words, especially, right? And so we want to especially showcase today four different cases of the women of God. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. We're going to make this case today. Go to the next slide. So the case study is going to be able to look at four different types of women, right? We're going to look at Philip's daughters. Everybody say Philip's daughters. We're going to look at Priscilla who was married to Aquila. We're going to look at Lydia, and we're going to look at Tabitha. We have our very own Tabitha in this church. We talked to her last week on Zoom, and we're going to go into a little further detail about that. Amen. So we're going to need some volunteers as we go on. So I'm going to need four young women for Philip's daughters. I'm going to need a Priscilla, who is Mary. I'm going to need a Lydia, who is a wearer of purple. And then I'm going to need a Tabitha, an older woman, who doesn't mind being like a seamstress. So we're just going to do some role playing today. Just a little bit. You're going to come up here. You're going to stand. I'm going to give you something. You're going to show it. And you're going to have a seat. You're going to keep it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's not going to require too much. You don't have to memorize any lines or anything. You don't have to do a monologue. There's no dialogue. Hallelujah. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to be nervous. You don't have to have stage fright. Just come up here. Get what I have for you. Go sit down. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Just have to help you, help, help you. Some people, you know, they just overthink it. Don't have to overthink it. It's okay. All right. So let's get into it. Here we go. Philip's daughters. Philip's daughters. So I need four young women. Four young women. Four young women. Come on up here, young women or girls. Four young women. Come on. Come on. Just need four. Here you go. Stand right there. Here we go. Okay, we got five. Here we go. Okay, here we go. All right. Now go ahead and look in your bag. What's in there? Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read the scripture while they open their bag. Philip's daughters, preaching, and the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed. And I came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. He was, he was one of the seven that was chosen as a deacon. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. They preached. They preached. What y'all got in y'all bag? A microphone. Shake your mic. Do like that. Shake your mic. Shake your mic. That's right. They were preaching. They were preaching. And then, you know, preachers, we, we have to prepare our message. We have to prepare our message. Go to the next slide. We have to prepare our message. And so I gave you all a notebook. And then they were traveling, and so they had a bag. You know, women, we have to have a bag. We got to have a bag. If, if you don't have a bag, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You need a bag as a woman. How many of y'all got your bag with you right now? See? Look at all the women. Where's your bag? Y'all have a bag? Now you got a bag. I just gave you one. 
okay? But they were preaching, and it's believed that their names were Hermione, Eutychus, Arius, and Charlene, and they were believed to have been martyred. They were martyred. Hallelujah. They believed in the message of Jesus Christ. They were serving Jesus in their youth, and they were serving him in their singlehood, and they were killed for it. They were killed for it. They were martyred. They stood on the word of God. Hallelujah. They lifted up their voice as a trumpet, and they made it known that Jesus is Lord. And as you all know, their father was an evangelist, so it's highly likely that they were evangelists too, going into various cities throughout the Middle East. And they had their, I'm, I'm just symbolically giving them a microphone, right? And they were, they, were, they were sharing the word of God. And clearly their father, he actually witnessed to uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, right? And so they had heard about that story, about how their father was found in a Zotus. Hallelujah. And so these young women were in the first century church. And they were preachers. Hallelujah. They knew the doctrine. They understood baptism in Jesus' name. They understood receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They understood living holy. Hallelujah. Living upright before the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we want to celebrate women in their singlehood. If you're a woman, hallelujah, and you're single, hallelujah, you're a young woman, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Learn his word. Get his word down in you. That's a plug for Sunday school. Hallelujah. And Christian education. Amen. We have our associate pastor in the back. Stand up so you, he can stay y'all can see him hallelujah you can get on the zoom on thursday night and learn the word of god from our brother hallelujah god bless you ladies go ahead and have a seat good job clap it up for them thank you jesus philip's daughters go to the next slide here we go priscilla married to aquila they were tent makers ministering together and found a certain jew named aquila born in pontus lately come from italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought for their occupation. They were tent makers. Everybody say tent makers. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, who when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him into them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So we see here that Aquila, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, and Priscilla were married. They were a married couple. I need a married couple. Come on, married couple. Get on up here, married couple. Come on, married couple. Come on, just a married couple. Just a married, there we go. We got you. We got these two. We got these two, a married couple. All right, you got a gift in there. Look in there. Look in there. What's in that bag? Tent maker. What y'all going to make us? Oh, that's the tent. It's a sheet. It's a sheet. All right, what else is in there? What's in there? All right. Oh, oh wow. You got, some, you got some gloves. All right, and you got some rope. You got anything else in there? Amen. One more. Oh, yeah, what is that? Oh, some tools. Okay, some measuring tools. So they were tent makers, you all. They made tents. So they didn't have houses like we have. They lived in tents. And so they, they, were, they were tent makers. So they would have to measure. They would have to be familiar with mathematics. They were in business. So they worked together. So she probably was the seamstress, and he worked with, 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 the, with, with the men and set, set it up and made tents and things like that. Right? And so they were able to meet up with another preacher. And the preacher wasn't telling the people about Jesus correctly. Right? He was leaving out a little bit of information. But they got together, the husband and wife, and they sat down with the young man. And they said, oh, you know, you're doing a really good job. But you need to go a little bit further. This is the direction that you want to point the people in. You need to tell them about water baptism in Jesus' name. You need to tell them to repent of their sins. And then you need to pray with them to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So this tag team couple right here, they were bivocational, meaning they had a job 
and then they were also preaching. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so you wedding, you couples, when you get together on your wedding day or your wedding night, right, you, you should be discussing also of the love that you have for one another, but how you're going to make your relationship work with Jesus. Hallelujah. Right? And so how are you going to be able to promote the ministry of Jesus Christ? How are you going to be able to serve God together as a unit? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so all the married couples, raise your hand, married couples, married women, all the married women. Hallelujah. That's like 80% of the room. Thank you, Jesus. We want to encourage you. Serve the Lord Jesus with your husband. Serve the Lord Jesus with your husband. Men of God, serve the Lord Jesus with your wife. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Discuss the things that you need to discuss. Have prayer with one another. Study the word of God. Have conversations about the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't take steps hallelujah, in the wrong direction without advising and talking with one another. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Good job. Clap it up, tent maker. Thank you, Jesus. You guys get to keep that. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the next side. Next slide. Lydia, she was a businesswoman. It says, and on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resor resorted there. And a certain woman named Lydia, everybody say Lydia. Lydia. A seller of purple. Say a seller of purple. Of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us. Who was who, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come unto my house and abide there and be constrained of us. All right, of us, or of, of, of us. Amen. So she was a seller of purple. I need a woman who is a businesswoman. Hallelujah, the come on up, aspiring businesswoman, seller of purple. I need you to be the seller of purple. Come on, lady. There you go. Come on up. Come on up. There we have it. There we have it. Amen. Amen. What is in there? What do you have? Some bubble bath. That's the dye. That's the lavender dye. We're just pretending. Everything else is purple, right? She was selling all the purple, right? And so a seller of purple would be a person who was like, they were selling dyes, like indigo, like all the jeans and things that we wear, those things have to be dyed first, all right? You, you make the material, then you dye it. And so in her case, she wasn't selling indigo. In this case, she was selling purple. There you go. You can take that with you. Go ahead and take that with you. You got to give. You wasn't even expecting that when you came to church today. Amen. Amen. Thank you for volunteering. And so she was a seller of purple, and she was a businesswoman. Amen. If you are in business, hallelujah, you can also serve Jesus. Once again, you be bivocational, right? And so even in your business dealings, hallelujah, you're talking to, about Jesus. You're promoting Jesus. Hallelujah. You're letting people know, oh, I go over to Ecclesia of Christ Apostolic. Hallelujah. That's why my business is blessed. Hallelujah. I have integrity. You can deal with me. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to take advantage of you. I'm not going to take some of the purple and put something else in it. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a woman of God, a woman of integrity. Hallelujah. That's why you should do business with me. Hallelujah. And it says that as she was doing her business, she heard Paul and them praying. And she said, oh, what are y'all talking about? I want to hear more about it. As a matter of fact, come to my house. Hallelujah. So she actually, she actually started a church in her own house because she believed in this thing. Hallelujah. And it says they were constrained there, meaning they stayed there. Hallelujah. For a number of weeks. Hallelujah. Preaching and teaching the word of God in her home. Hallelujah. She was using her substance. She was using what she knew to host the man of God. Hallelujah. That's what they say, the man of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? But she was hosting him, hosting him in her house. And so she actually planted a church in Thyatira 
at her house. She was the one that was the host of that place. Amen. And so as business people, when you're out in the marketplace, hallelujah, you should be constrained by the Holy Ghost to do to the do to the bidding of the Lord Jesus, to do right by people. Hallelujah. I, I, I look at Dee Dee and I look at Clint, and one of the things that they've said to me is, you know what? Our employees are blessed because we have the Holy Ghost. We're not going to take advantage of them. Hallelujah. And so that's what we that's what we want to do. If we're in business, we want to make sure that we do business correctly. Just like we did here uh, at Ecclesia, we had our business meeting, right? We, we, we shared some information with you all. So that means now there's a trust, hallelujah, that you're giving to the pastor, right? You're like, oh, okay, you're going to disclose some information? Okay, I'm, I'm going to support the work even more because I see what it is that you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. And so Lydia, hallelujah, a seller of purple, hallelujah, she also was a host of the church. She became bivocational as well. She had her day job, hallelujah, and then she was also doing the things of God. And that's how we should be. We should be out here in the marketplace telling people about Jesus, hallelujah, so that when they encounter us, they're like, oh, you have the Holy Ghost? You baptized in Jesus' name? I want to know more about that. Hallelujah. We take it everywhere we go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's get into our next one. Thank you, Jesus. Go to the next slide. Thank you, Lord. Amen. This one's, this one's uh, two slides. This is a little bit longer. Amen. So this is, this is going to be dedicated to our dear Sister Lana. Sister Lana, if you're watching, I brought my lay. Today we had, we had Lana's, Lana's lay lounge uh, on Zoom. We played the, the ghetto Jeopardy uh, about the cooking game. Sister Lana was making something with her resin, and she was just answering all the questions. I'm like, you're not supposed to answer the questions, Sister Lana. We supposed to answer the questions, but she's a cook, and she, so she just knew them all. I said, okay, we're gonna make this game a little bit harder when we do this again. Amen, but shout out to Sister Lana, because she is Ecclesia's Tabitha. Yeah. She is Ecclesia's Tabitha. But my dear sister here, she made, uh, she made Pastor a, um, what's it, like an Afghan, like a, 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 a a crochet blanket. Come on, my sister. I already had you in mind. You're going to stand in for Lana today. I want you to come and take a look at this. Amen. You're going to be our Tabitha. Amen. Put your lay on, honey. Put your lay on. There we talking about. That's right. We're the women. We want to do all the things. All right. Go ahead. Take a look in there. What's in there? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Bunch of, bunch of scarves. All right. All right. You can knit that together. I don't know if that, what kind of that would look like, but it's just a role play. All right, and that's some stitch work. You, I don't know if you can use that stuff. Can you use any of that? You can. How long have you been uh, sewing? 48 years. Did y'all see that blanket that we pastor posted out on the Facebook? That was a beautiful blanket. You can make me one too. I'll pay you, I'll pay you, yeah, yeah, amen. So shout out to Sister Lana, amen. And so let's read the scripture. Stand right here, my sister. It says, Tabitha, Dorcas, amen, revive, revive to continue work. Now there was a, that's amazing. God revived her so she could keep working for him. Hey, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. You a senior citizen, you like, Lord Jesus, I'm not done. I'm not done. I want, I want to keep working for you. It, it's just that satisfying. Hallelujah. Amen. Look what it says. It says, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. Everybody say Tabitha. Which is the interpretation is called Dorcas. Say Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. For as much as Lida was nigh to Joppa, that's, that's two cities, it's like uh, Compton to Carson. It says, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, and they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went, went with them. Go to the next slide. It says, when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by weeping. They were all crying. Amen. And it says, and the widows stood by weeping. 
and the showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down. He put them out. He said, get out of here while they're crying. He said, and pray and turn him, turn him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And it shata, hallelujah. He gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows presented her alive. Say that, presented her alive. Say it again. Say, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. Amen. That's in Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Hallelujah. If you got your Bible, star that one. Save that one. Go back and read that one again on your own this week. Amen. So this is one more woman in the word of God. Now, this is an older woman. She's a senior person. Amen. She was doing alms deeds. She was doing all these good deeds. And she happened to die. She didn't have a Dr. Schaefer. She didn't have nobody to check her blood pressure problem. Amen. Amen. We got to get right, y'all. Dr. Schaefer going to be ashamed of us with this food we've been eating. We're going to do right, Dr. Schaefer. We had a bubble thon. We walked six, well, I didn't. They walked six miles. I walked two. We're going to get right, Dr. Schaefer. If you all need to see a doctor, Dr. Schaefer is here. She's with Kaiser Permanente. She don't have very long. She will be retiring soon. The pandemic kind of just made it clear that the people are not nice. Amen. But, but she didn't have a doctor. She, you know, Luke is writing this. He's writing this in the book of Acts. And so she actually, you going to take the bag? Oh, okay. I was going to give the bag away. You want it? Okay. Amen. Whoever wants the bag, you can have the bag. Amen. You want the bag? Okay. Amen. I'm not getting distracted. I'm still on the point. But the point being that she died. And she died doing all these good works as unto the Lord Jesus. And so... Our dear sister is very similar, right? You, you older women in the faith, whatever you find your hands to do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Serve the Lord even in your, in your older adulthood, in your senior adulthood. And don't be messy. Sometimes the seniors, they be kind of messy. Okay? Serve God. Amen. Try to keep the mess down. Amen. But that's what we want to promote here at Ecclesia. We love Sister Lana. We appreciate all of what you do. You are our Tabitha. Right? We have our very own miracle here at Ecclesia. Amen. She, she needed a heart. Hallelujah. And God blessed her with a heart. And then she went through a period where she was kind of rejecting it. Hallelujah. But she made it home now. Hallelujah. And we're going to continue to do those Zooms as needed. Hallelujah. So we can keep her encouraged till she can make it back here to the household of faith. Hallelujah. During, uh, during April, uh, during Easter, she blessed our, all the children with all the Easter baskets. Amen. And so all of you older women, you have skills, you have abilities. We, we're telling you to get busy. Get busy in the house of the Lord. Amen. Start training some of these young women in here. Hallelujah. So they can know how to be uh, very, um, j just be very productive in their life. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Clap it up for our sister. Clap it up for her. Amen. 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 Go to the next slide. So we, we just want to promote to the women of God that you need to serve the Lord Jesus. That's my point today. You need to serve the Lord Jesus. Go to the next slide. Go ahead, that slide right there. Right? So uh, we want to serve the Lord Jesus in our singlehood. We want to serve the Lord Jesus as married women. We want to serve the Lord Jesus as business women. And we want to serve the Lord Jesus even as widow women or senior women. Amen? It's very fulfilling 
to serve the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's very fulfilling to witness to your friends. It's very fulfilling to see your grandchildren and your children receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mother Gaither is a, a blessed example of that. Hallelujah. Her son had the Holy Ghost. And now our grandbabies are coming to church and they're praying through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you bring them to the little peeps, we're going to teach them up. Hallelujah. Like I, We have like seven kids in there. Three of them have received the Holy Ghost in the last two years. Amen. Because they're hearing the word of God. They're worshiping in the service. And they're learning more about who Jesus is. Amen. And so we want to encourage all of the women to serve Jesus. Serve the Lord Jesus. Give him everything that you got. Hallelujah. Because he's going to give you double for your trouble. Go to the next slide. And so I got a message for the men. It's the same message. Serve the Lord Jesus. Serve the Lord Jesus. Serve the Lord Jesus. It's a no-brainer at this point. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give you all the case study because all the Bible is about the men. Amen. Single men serve the Lord Jesus. Married men serve the Lord Jesus. Businessmen serve the Lord Jesus. Widow men serve the Lord Jesus. Senior men serve the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember a time here uh, in Los Angeles when gang banging was very, very prominent. Hallelujah. And I asked Deacon Buck, even pastor, like, how did y'all make it through that thing? Everybody was dying all around you and always getting shot. And, you know, it was crip this and cuz this and blood this and slob this. And it was just a mess all throughout the city. Hallelujah. I remember that time. It, it just... It just was, it was just, it was a demise of our people. Hallelujah. And then the, the Latino community got involved and they started in on us. Hallelujah. And it just was, it was just a canker worm. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was like a disease was in our city. Hallelujah. Sometimes it tries to raise up its head from time to time. But hallelujah, those of you that made it through, God spared your life. Hallelujah. He spared your life. He didn't allow for you. He didn't He didn't allow for you to succumb to gang banging. Hallelujah. He didn't allow for you to succumb to gun violence. He didn't allow for you, hallelujah, to lose your life before you can meet him, before you can repent of your sins, before you can be baptized in Jesus' name, before you can receive the Holy Ghost, before you can get married and have children. Hallelujah. He gave you a satisfying life. He gave you a fulfilling life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of all your praise. He's worthy of all your worship. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous went up into it, and they are saved. Hallelujah. Come on, me and the God. Lift up your voice as a trumpet. Let the redeemed say so. Let the redeemed say so. Let the blood bar say so. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so because of that, hallelujah, we're able to be here at this church. Hallelujah. You're able to worship the Lord Jesus. You're able to bring up your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Julius, come on and pass those things out. Hallelujah. Everybody go ahead and get one of those. Amen. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's passing those out. I just want to refresh your mind. Go to the next slide about what we discussed earlier today. So you might be saying, well, why would I serve the Lord Jesus? Let me give you some more reasons. I'm going to recap. Amen. We talked about this. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. It is our A in our language. Amen. And then Omega is the Z. It's the last letter in our alphabet. Amen. And so we see here in Revelation 22 and 13, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. Amen. Look over in Revelation 1 and 6. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Look what it says in Revelation 21 and 6. It says, and he said unto him, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of life. Amen. Revelations 1 and 11. It says, I say Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He keeps on repeating himself. He's very, very repetitive. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, which thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in uh, in, in uh, Asia, Asia Minor, right? And so he wanted them to know who he was. He was letting them know, I am everything that you need from beginning to end. I am Alpha and Omega. Everybody needs to get one. Everybody, everybody, just pass them out. Just pass them out. There's 120 of them in here. Just, just pass them out. Sprinkle them out. You can throw them up in the air. It don't matter. Amen. Right? And so he was letting them know, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm everything that you need. Everything that you need is in me. It's in me. Whatever it is that you need, I can be that for you. That's why he says over there in the book of Exodus, he said, I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. I, I am what I will be. I am what I want to be. I am what I need to be. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you need, I will be that very thing for you. Hallelujah. I'm willing to go the extra distance for you. I went all the way to Calvary for you. I lay my life down for you. Hallelujah. I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the first and the last. I'm everything in between. And so we looked at it earlier this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to look at it again because I want you to walk out of here and know why it is that you're serving Jesus. Hallelujah. We come from a pastor. Our pastor, he wanted us to be very informed. Amen. And so those of us that came up underneath his ministry, our, our ministries are very similar. We want you to be informed. Hallelujah. About what it is that you're doing and why it is that you're doing it. Amen. So once again, we'll walk you through. So A, Jesus is our Alpha and our Adonai, our Advocate, the Almighty, the Author and the Finisher of our faith. B, He is the Babe of Bethlehem, the Bridge, the Bridegroom, the Bread of Life, the Bright and Morning Star. C, He is the Christ, the Creator and Cornerstone, the Counselor, the Chosen One, the Chief Shepherd. D, He is the Door, the Day Star, the Delight and Deliverer. E, he is Jesus. He is Emmanuel, the exalted one from everlasting to everlasting. F, he is the first fruits of the resurrection, the fountain of life, the foundation of the church, the friend of sinners. G, he is God, our guide, the good shepherd, the great physician. He is our H, he is our hope, our help, our healer, our high priest. Hallelujah. He is our great I am and I, our inheritance, the immortal, the invisible one. J, he is our joy and our justifier. K, he is the king of kings and the king of glory. L, Jesus is Lord, the light, the love, the light of the world, the living water, the lamb of God. He is the Messiah, the master, the mediator, the messenger, the man of sorrows. He is the Nazarene, the new wine, the new covenant, the name that is above every name. Oh, he is the Omega, our offering for sin, the only begotten of the Father. P, he is the prophet priest, our Passover, the propitiation for our sin, and Prince of Peace. Q, he is the quieter of the storms of life. R, he is the redeemer, the refuge, the refiner, the rose of Sharon, the resurrection and life. S, he is the savior, the shepherd, the shepherd, the suffering servant, the son of God. T, he is the truth and our teacher. U, he is the unblemished lamb of God. V, he is the vine, the vicarious sacrifice, the victor over the grave. W, he is the way, the word made flesh, the witness, the water of life, and the wonderful counselor. X, he is the expected Messiah of the Old Testament and the exalted Lord of the New Testament. Y, he is the yoke fellow and yesterday, today, and forevermore. And Z, he is Jesus, son, Zion's holy king. Hallelujah. He is everything. He 
is everything. He is everything that you need him to be. Hallelujah. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first. He is the last. Hallelujah. And everything in between. Glory, 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 glory. Go ahead, grab your balloon. Grab your balloon. Hallelujah. Grab your balloon. Grab your balloon. Hallelujah. This is the Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you come to church, when you come to church, you come and you get blown up. You get blown up. You get blown up. Come on. You get blown up. You get blown up. But during the week, all kind of stuff happening. You get a little get discouraged. You get a little bit scared, discontented. So you lose a little bit. It deflates a little bit. It deflates. But then you you then on Tuesday, when Pastor is teaching, you listen and you you pray, you worship, and then you get blown up again. Amen. And so you get you get a little bit more encouraged. Hallelujah. And then if you happen, hallelujah, to have an opportunity to come to prayer. Hallelujah. Once a month prayer in person, you get a little bit more strength. Come on. Look at me, Dr. Schaefer. I'm in shape. I got good breath. Uh-huh. But then but then somebody dies and you get discouraged. But then you're like, wait a minute, I'm going to the funeral service. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Then you get to go to the council and they work you real hard. Yeah. And then if you get real committed, you get real committed, you go to the, the PAW National Convention. Yeah. Up and down, but you got to keep on blowing. You got to keep on blowing. You got to keep on blowing. Amen. You got to keep on blowing. You got to keep on giving your all in all. You got to keep on loving Jesus. Amen. Amen. So that you can impact others. You can impact others. Hit it. You can impact others. You can impact others. Throw it up. You can impact others. It's okay. You in the sanctuary. Throw it. You can impact others. Tie it and throw it. Hallelujah. You can impact others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your Holy Ghost is going to impact all kind of people. Hallelujah. You're going to tell people about Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to be encouraging people. You're going to be loving on people. You're going to be praying for people. You're going to be laying hands upon the sick. And they're going to recover. Hallelujah. Come on and stand on your feet. Come on and lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Hallelujah. If you want to have the Holy Ghost, come on down here. This is the altar call. Come on down here. You can get this Holy Ghost. You can get this Holy Ghost. You can get this Holy Ghost. God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. He loves you. He wants you to have his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just came to encourage you today. Be happy to serve Jesus. Be happy to serve Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on down here. Come on down here and get this Holy Ghost. God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Clap your hands, all ye people. 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 Glory. Lord Jesus loves you. He loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are the, y'all are encouraged to serve Jesus? You are encouraged to serve Jesus. You got some examples of how you can serve Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you guys. I love you all. I want you to serve Jesus. I want to serve Jesus with you. Let's do it together as a team. Hallelujah. I'm your sister. 
I love you. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Sister Lana, all our people, Sister Lydia, y'all keep on serving Jesus. Hallelujah. Because ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because the Holy Ghost party don't stop.